Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. So you think you've got a brilliant business idea? What will you do next? Will you dutifully stick to your 9 to 5, content to daydream about it while others shape the world? Or will you take the entrepreneurial leap and ignore the potential risks? For Tom Golisano, the choice was clear. He took the plunge armed with $3,000 and his credit card. Paychex, the company he founded, is now worth over $40 billion. In this summary to Built, Not Born, you'll learn the practical steps Golisano took to get there. The lessons include everything from crafting simple but watertight business plans to recruiting the right people to making the best deals. You'll also find out how to profitably exit your business when the time comes. By standing on the shoulders of an entrepreneurial giant, your vision can become reality. Chapter 1. Deciding if Entrepreneurship Works for You Before starting a billion-dollar company Tom Golisano was a regular guy trying to make the best out of a decent job. He'd failed to get several ventures off the ground but, undeterred, he decided to start Paychex, a payroll business. Yes, it was risky, but even traditional employment carries risks these days with layoffs and disappearing pensions. Ultimately, the choice between playing it safe or taking a chance boiled down to his appetite for risk. So, before jumping in headfirst, you should reflect deeply on your motives and abilities. Ask yourself if you truly have the drive and resilience required for the entrepreneur lifestyle. Are you passionate about the knowledge you'll need of your target market, offerings, and customers? And if you're considering taking on investors, be realistic about what your potential market share could be. As an entrepreneur, you're likely optimistic by nature, but smart goal setting will avoid unnecessary pressure down the line. You don't need a business to adopt an entrepreneurial mindset, though. You can challenge assumptions, spot unmet needs, and drive innovations that create value even within a traditional corporate setting. Whatever form your entrepreneurship takes, it necessitates both bravery and creativity. But by fixating on problems begging for solutions, taking smart risks, and persevering through setbacks, you can make your business dreams a reality and reap the personal and financial rewards. Financial success aside, being the master of your destiny is the ultimate reward of the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Chapter 2. Staying on top of your business. Consider this for a moment. If you were selling popcorn, how many buyers would you need to cover your costs and make a profit? Most of what you do in business revolves around answering that kind of fundamental question. So when it comes to your own business, answer the question of how many buyers you need to cover costs and make a profit on a single page. Become proficient in writing and reading profit and loss statements. Use accurate statistics and data-driven judgments, not your emotions. Above all, be honest. An accurate and truthful cost and profit assessment may reveal that your idea should be abandoned entirely which will save you time and money. Thoroughly understanding all operational and financial aspects is mandatory preparation for talks with potential lenders and investors. Be ready to convey how you intend to grow your business sustainably. And consider whether you're open to bringing on equity partners or investors as co-owners, too. Consider the legal structure your business should take carefully. What are the options? Do you want to start a sole proprietorship, partnership, or corporation? Consult lawyers, accountants, and tax advisors to determine the best corporate structure aligned to your goals. The right business formation early on will save you money, reduce your taxes, and avoid future legal headaches as you scale. What about buying a business? Well, purchasing an existing business can be a smart way to transition into entrepreneurship, but you should apply due diligence to make sure you're buying a healthy, promising business. Look at the company's finances and its operational costs. Ask yourself why it's being sold. Is something being hidden from you? Having an expert probe and test the company's viability is a sensible precaution. Whatever route you take into entrepreneurship, you'll have to learn about your particular industry and build relationships with your peers. There are no guarantees, but realistic optimism, expert guidance, and tenacious execution stack the odds in your favor. Now let's turn to the subject of finances. Chapter 3. Funding Your Business That initial $3,000 Golisano invested in paychecks came from a business he sold. 
As the business expanded, he enlisted partners. Some of them even sold their homes to fund franchises. Securing sufficient capital is non-negotiable for any startup. Personal savings and loans can provide initial seed money, but some entrepreneurs turn to relatives, friends, and connections. If you decide to take that route, ensure the lender or investor clearly understands the terms and conditions. And be sure to put everything in writing to avoid disputes later. Be brutally realistic in estimating how much total capital your concept needs. Do the basic math looking at costs versus revenue projections. Your potential investors will be more convinced if you put a sizable portion of your own assets into the business. At the start, you may even need to forego any salary from your fledgling business. When it comes to traditional lenders or equity investors, be transparent about how every dollar raised will be allocated. Be sure to take into account that venture capitalists have exit strategies and short-term return timelines that likely differ greatly from your long-term entrepreneurial vision. Tread carefully. Once funded, vigilant financial controls must be rock solid before considering additional growth funding options like an IPO. Business is a numbers game, so put in the time to master cash flow statements, balance sheets, income statements, and other financial reporting documents. And remember to think about all eventualities. Get a prenup with your romantic partner which states clearly who owns what and what they get after a separation or divorce. If you're already married, have that conversation with your spouse. Life is unpredictable. You don't want to work hard and lose assets and capital you could be investing in the future. Once your business is set up and functioning, your next task is to make it profitable. Chapter 4 Cash Flow and Profit So how do you stay in business and earn revenue consistently? Well, here are some proven ideas. The most sustainable revenue model involves building recurring client relationships rather than chasing one-time sales. So learn to think like software companies that ditch disks and downloads and embrace subscription services. Then, track your profits to ensure you're earning enough to stay solvent. Do some research to find out if your business will be relevant a few years down the track. After all, a remarkable 75% of products disappear within five years. Mitigate vulnerability by identifying diversification opportunities early, whether by repurposing existing assets or adding complementary offerings. For example, Paychex sells pension administration and human resource services at minimal cost by leveraging payroll data from its core payroll business. The money you need for your daily operations comes down to one thing, sales. Selling is non-negotiable. Go out and prospect clients to understand what it feels like. That way, you'll also learn more about how people perceive your product. In the process, you'll become a better salesperson, too. Get your prospects to commit by asking helpful questions or asking when they intend to start using your product. And a word of caution, never let big clients account for most of your revenue. If they walk away, it'll be hard for your business to recover. And even if they stick with you, many large clients also demand discounts, take more of your time, and bring down your profit margins. Paychex, for instance, decided that no client should account for more than one one-thousandth of its sales. Remember, your best client is the one who keeps coming back. Someone who buys a car from you might only show up after five years, but if you provide a service or subscription, you potentially have a client for life. Chapter 5, Hire for Attitude and Train for Skill Paychex has always prioritized training, but what does this multi-billion dollar company look for in potential recruits? It all comes down to attitude, the right attitude. After all, nice people are easier to train and incorporate. But first, as leader of your business, you need to build a culture rooted in mutual respect, cooperation, fairness, and creativity. If you don't build it, your company will adopt a different one by default. Staff up skillfully through selective hiring paired with superior training to build a world-class crew. Consider applying a pregnant pause when interviewing candidates. What does that mean in practice? Well, silence can be uncomfortable, making people react in ways that reveal their true selves. It's also useful to observe how your potential recruits dress, behave, and treat people they might perceive to be less powerful. Try calling someone to bring them coffee and see how they behave toward that person. How you treat the trainees in your organization also matters. 
Paychecks, for instance, goes out of its way to make sure they're well taken care of. Its trainee office occupies the center of the main office with trainees free to interact with permanent staff. Additionally, professional development for your employees should be a consistent process interspersed with fun moments. And what about compensation? Well, high salaries might well retain the best people, but can also make them complacent. To fight laziness, strategically incorporate performance-based incentives into a good base salary. And a final word about staffing, be sure to surround yourself with those who are unafraid to sweat, think, and perform at the highest levels. Chapter 6, A Good Deal for Everyone Divorce can be messy, but when Golisano sat down to negotiate terms with his first wife, they quickly agreed on a solution. Why was that? It's simple, really, the agreed terms were mutually beneficial for both parties. And that principle is the one you should apply everywhere. So, how can you make a deal that works for everyone? The first step entails walking in the other side's shoes. Try to understand their situation, their constraints, and their motivations. Learn how much you can concede and still cover your costs and make a profit. Try as much as possible to avoid external vendors like lawyers who bill hourly for their services. If you must use them, vigilantly monitor their activity. Set clear guidelines up front to mitigate unwelcome surprises come invoice time. Building long-term collaborative supplier relationships serves everyone's interests through established trust and goodwill. More broadly, only involve lawyers after initial deal parameters and intent get established between parties. At the end of the day, complex legal agreements should reinforce good negotiating, not obstruct it. Remember that you, the client, remain in control. Remember the pregnant pause suggested earlier for interviews? Well, negotiation is another area where silence works in your favor. Master the well-timed pregnant pause mid-negotiation. The other side might try to fill the awkward silence by conceding a point. Above all, be gracious in victory or defeat. Show respect for your competition. In a world where good relationships enable the next deal, consider mutually beneficial negotiations as long-term assets. Chapter 7, Build a Stellar Reputation. What comes to mind when you hear names like Nike, Apple, Microsoft, Starbucks, Walmart, or any other brand name? Whether your reaction to them is positive or negative, it's sure to be one or the other. A positive public profile serves as a magnet attracting customers, talent, and opportunities. That positive image all starts with a great brand name. Your name should inspire trust, but it must be backed up by actions, values, and business outcomes. Ultimately, a stellar reputation must be earned. Model the behavior you expect from your employees. It's your conduct that will set the tone good or bad. Promises carry weight, so undercommit and overdeliver consistently. Even small gestures like paying suppliers promptly will help build rapport and loyalty. Always be sure to leave a good first impression. So mind both the visual and emotional cues you make in every interaction. Satisfied clients will be happy to tell others about your business. But when the inevitable crisis hits and it will respond swiftly and try to correct the issue. And here are some other ideas. Stay networked locally to nurture opportunities and helpful connections. Why not join your local chamber of commerce? Avoid unnecessary political alignments. Donate to charities if you can afford it, but don't overcommit if doing so will undermine your bottom line. Finally, to aim for those stars, commit to having everyone in your business uphold your values. Pay particular attention to your frontline staff like receptionists and people who answer the phone. Have them rehearse well-practiced lines that work, but ensure that their delivery is always friendly and effortless. Chapter 8, Planning Your Exit Paychecks will be Tom Golisano's lasting legacy, but even he had to step down from the company and take a less active role as chairman of the board. Whether passing the torch to a child, selling to the highest bidder, or retaining passive ownership in retirement, proactively you should plan for your next step while still on top of your game. Avoid long-term commitments or investments that will discourage interested buyers if you choose to cash out. Selling while your company is struggling will only attract low bidders. Be patient. Wait till you're performing well again to get the best value if you then do elect to sell. 
you will also need to decide whether you hire experts to appraise your company before the sale. Do you want brokers or lawyers to push the sale? How are you going to be paid? In cash, stocks, or a blend of both? Getting paid cash means you don't have to worry about the performance of the company once you leave. On the other hand, owning a share in a giant buyer might be appealing. Remember, there's more to life than work. Don't tie your whole identity to being the CEO. You need rest and balance to function at your best. So spend time with your family, rest, and explore the next chapter of your life. What will your next move be? Do you want to completely retire or start a new company? If you're going to stay on and help with the transition, agree on what your role will be and how you'll be compensated. In the end, it's all about living life on your terms. Final Summary Embracing entrepreneurship requires accepting risk, but the payoff in autonomy and impact can be worth it. Start by reflecting honestly on your risk appetite and abilities before diving in. While passion matters, data-driven analysis should drive decisions to pursue or kill ideas. Meticulously plan funding needs, operations, legal structures, and growth strategies. You might need to commit personal funds before trying to attract investors. Cash flow will get easier to handle when you master sales. Court recurring customers if you can. Carefully build a skilled team united by respect, fairness, creativity, and great salesmanship. Seek win-win deals that leave both sides stronger. Consistently deliver on promises to forge a reputation as a principled operator. And plan a timeline for exiting through a sale or transition while business metrics are still strong. With vision, smart goal setting, ethical judgment calls, patient relationship building, and tactical execution, you can turn your ideas into thriving ventures. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.